Who's Mike Worth? Mike Worth is a professor here at Queens, uh, artist in Charlotte and around the country, uh, dad. Uh, I've always been into art. Um, I've just always, like every kid, loved to draw, take out the crayons, but I spent more time on it than most kids. So it became clear to my parents and me that that was going to be my future. I didn't know what it was going to be. Um, I like cartoons, I like video games, you know, all the things that came out in the 80s were, were like eye candy to me. So I was like, yeah. So I just, I don't know, kind of just did it until I figured out what was going to be my career. Some of the stuff I'm doing now is I brought back an old way of, of like my, an old style that I had in college. I used to do this sort of like, uh, instead of filling an area with color, I would fill it in with little lines and circles, like Morse code looking uh, patterns to fill a space. And I've always wanted to do that because it, to me it represented kind of energy and invisible power, right? So a favorite piece of mine, but when it came to doing the because uh, it was a personal piece when it came to doing the professional job for Peculiar Rabbit, the owner said, like, well, I really love Starry Night, you know? And I was like, well, because I had shown him a, a, one of my sketches, and I was like, well, I could just paint this with a roller, and it's, like, really easy. So he was hip to it, and uh, we went for it. We got the colors right, and it just worked. So there's something about it that I realized halfway through the mural that, like, I was just going to do a Starry Night background with the stars, with the yellow and then the blue cutting back on top to make it look like it was glowing. But then uh, the bunny is wearing like a red suit, like a jacket. So I was like, well, what if I shaded and tinted the rabbit with colors? I made them flow and I got my can out because I didn't have those colors for a roller, right, in, in a pan. And I just started putting pink over the, the bunny's jacket and I was just like, damn! And that just kind of made me go, this is working. And then the can flow versus the roller being like, you know, five inches of solid and then like it worked, but the, the can, I could bend them like, like elbow macaroni, and then all of a sudden my flows were flowing. And then I could take the flow of the background and continue it into the rabbit. And then I think that's what makes the piece just lock tight. Even the beer has flow through it. So like on its own, like they're not great paintings, right? But once that skin brought them in to unify and make the piece one cohesive structure, I just, we, we had the scissor lift. I had a 75 foot scissor lift on a boom. So it was like this like thing that just kind of goosenecked. So I just threw us out over the street so we could stand back. Me and my partner, Dustin, we were working on the piece together. And I just was like, like just loving it because it had finally locked up. And when you feel like that, that moment of like, it's like, man, all that extra work, all that extra paint and like frustration was worth it. And the owner of the Peculiar Rabbit hired me again to do the rabbit hole and he let me do my thing. He didn't say, um, I want, well, he first said, I want more rabbits. And I was like, all right, I gave you the biggest rabbit in town. What do you need now, right? More? Like, and he's like, well, and I was like, well, let me hit you with an idea real quick. So I, I kind of made it up and sent it to him and we just looked at it together on his computer and he just went, oh. And he's like, what is this? I can't, what, what, it looks like a dragon to me. Like, what is it? And I'm like, this is the energy of the neighborhood. And he was like, oh. And I was like, right? Like, nobody can put their finger on it, right? Like, Plaza Midwood as a neighborhood in Charlotte is so all over the place. I mean, you have every class, every race, and it's artsy, right? But then also families, and then also retail, and then all, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So when I did How a Bill Becomes a Law, I did that as a contest with uh, the old chair of history uh, from here, who's no longer with us um, uh, at Queens. She's still alive. <laughs> Dr. Suzanne Cooper Guasco, a great friend of mine. Um, we collaborated and we did How a Bill Becomes a Law, and that graphic exploded. I mean, um, you know, it's for sale as posters. It's like uh, it was on kids.gov for a while until the government did their own infographics, but back when they were getting hip to it, um, I got a note from the GSA, General Services Administration, saying, hi, I'm the administrator uh, appointed by the Obama administration. Um, president thinks your graphic is dope and you know we want to use these types of things to enrich young kids and we just want to know if we can use it on the website. And I was like, absolutely yes, yeah.